Today is an awesome day because we're installing Wi-Fi 6E in our home network and it's about time. Hey, hey guys, what's up? I'm Mike and welcome back or welcome to the Ultimate Tech Hub. We currently have a Wi-Fi 6 access point in our home network and it works well, but Wi-Fi 6E is much faster because of the six gigahertz band. The six gigahertz band is what provides the extremely fast speeds that we all want and need. Who doesn't want faster Wi-Fi speeds? I do. This is the ingenious ECW336 Wi-Fi 6E access point. This access point operates on the 2.4 five and six gigahertz bands. The ECW336 is powered by power over ethernet. This AP includes a five gig LAN port, a DC 12 volt connection if you're not gonna use power over ethernet, and a reset button. And this access point is very thin, it looks nice, stylish, lightweight, durable, and on the back of the AP, it connects right here to the bracket for the ceiling mount. Okay, here are the supplies and tools you're gonna need to install the access point. First, we're gonna need measuring tape, drill, hammer, pencil, drill bits. You're gonna need a stud finder. And if you're gonna make your own patch cables, long cables, you'll need some cable. We're gonna use Cat6A. Also the connectors, the boots, crimping tool, wire stripper. And don't forget, if you're gonna go in the attic, make sure you've got adequate mask. Also gloves as well. And of course you'll need a ladder to access the attic and the ceiling where you're gonna install the access point. Okay, first thing you wanna do is determine the center of your home. That's where the access point should be located. And right here you can see is our WA630 access point. Now this is a Wi-Fi 6 access point and we get great coverage throughout the house. So my plan is to leave that access point where it's at. We're gonna install the Wi-Fi 6E access point at the end of the room by the slider. And at that location, it will provide coverage throughout the house as well as the backyard by the pool. I could take down this access point and just mount the new one here, but I'd like to have two access points. And we all know more access points is more better. So let me show you the location of our new access point. Our location for the new access point will be about right here, and I'll drill a hole through the ceiling into the attic. We'll run our Cat6A wiring through the attic all the way to the network panel in our closet. And then we'll attach the mounting kit with the provided hardware. Now that we have our location, we need to cut some wire that goes from that access point to the network panel in our master bedroom closet. So we're gonna use our measuring tape. We'll simply measure from the access point all the way through to the closet. And before we go into the attic, we're gonna terminate both ends of that wire because it's more difficult to terminate that wire on that ladder. So let's go ahead and measure from the access point to the network panel. Come on, let's go. We're gonna start from here, 12 feet. And from here, we have 17 feet. Got about six feet. In here, we got six more feet. And right here, we have 22 feet. Three feet, maybe another three feet. We need to measure from up here, the top, say six feet. Now doing all the math, getting the wire to the access point to the switch is 75 feet of cable. And we're gonna plug that cable right into our eight port PoE switch from Ingenious. And this will power our access point with PoE. All right, we're gonna roll out 80 feet of this Cat6A cable. This Cat6A ethernet cable was provided by JDM Automations out of Las Vegas. If you're looking for a company to install low voltage wiring, give Mike a call at JDM Automations and make sure to mention Ultimate Tech Hub to get that discount. And we got about 85 feet probably. I went a little longer than necessary, but just in case. So now we're gonna terminate both ends of the cable. At the end of this video, I'll provide links on how to terminate Cat6A, Cat6 riser cable, and Cat5E. And to make this process even easier, you can buy ethernet cables at various lengths that do not need to be terminated, which saves you some time. Let's go ahead and mark the location of our access point ceiling mount bracket. Now I've already checked this area prior to coming up here. Right here seems okay. You can tap here, that's definitely wood. It's hollow. So right here, we should be good. I'm gonna install the bracket here and drill the hole for the ethernet cable right around here as well. I'm gonna show you how this works like this. Okay, and it hooks on. Then you pull this up, tab up and it comes out like that. So we wanna put it like right here. And then we're gonna drill the hole about right here. So it comes out here. I want the cable not to be so noticed if possible. So it'll be facing this way anyways. So it'll be like this. First thing we're gonna do, trusty pencil. And we'll go ahead and mark right there. Okay. 
And at this point, we're gonna test out that bracket to make sure it holds, and it does. Next, we'll drill the hole for the Cat6A cable to go up into the attic. We'll start with a small drill bit and then go up to a larger drill bit. And now we'll see if the cable fits inside the hole. And it does. So now we're gonna push all the cable up into the attic. And then go in the attic and I'll find the cable and I'll drop it into the network panel. This is a lot of cable, so I'll fast forward this. Now we're gonna slide this onto the bracket, like so. And then we can just run this cable up and out of the way. Perfect, you can't see it at all. All right, let's go to the attic. Like I always say, be careful when working in the attic. All right, this is the attic, and back here is where the wire is. All right, here we are. Let's go check it out, shall we? Remember, you need to walk on these cross beams, otherwise you're gonna fall through the ceiling, and that would hurt. And voila, there is all of our wire. Kick away the insulation to reveal the cross beams. And then we'll grab that wire. So we got the wire, and we need to pull most of this all the way this way, so when I pull it to the network panel, it won't get caught on anything. Be good. There we go, we're good now. At this point, we're gonna work our way back towards the middle of the attic. Once again, walking on these cross beams carefully. And we've now pulled all our cable to the center of the attic. All right, we're gonna use the old bolt on a string to run the wire down the hole into the network panel. We'll attach this end to the Cat6 cable. We'll drop this down to the network panel. Because of the weight of this bolt, it will go straight down to the network panel. Guaranteed. Easy. And then when we go downstairs, I'll pull this through and it'll bring the other end down. It'll bring that Cat6 A cable down through there. And then I'll plug it into the switch and then we're done. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling it back that way to the network panel hole. Just a heads up, make sure to be careful when working in your attic. There are wires everywhere and boards with nails sticking out. So here we're gonna drop that bolt on a string through that hole that leads to the network panel below. And then wait for the sound of that bolt hitting the bottom. You can hear it down there. And I think we're already there. Now what I'm gonna do is attach this to the end of our cable. I'll stuff this down there in the hole a little bit just to get it started. Stuff it down like that. I think we're good right there. Good to go. Let's go downstairs and pull it through. And the old bolt on a string always works. Now we'll plug it in to our ingenious eight port PoE switch right here. I got a spot for it right there. First things I want to do though, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I'll plug it in and then uh, we'll get it looking pretty and test our new access point. Make sure everything works correctly. And here's the finished network panel all cleaned up. And this is the Cat6A wire that connects to the Ingenious 8 port switch. It connects right here. So now it's time to set up the access point. First, you need to download the Ingenious app, sign up with your email and a password, and then you want to add device. You can do this by scanning the QR code or by typing in the serial number. And then you'll go through a simple setup process. And congratulations, you're all done. And just a heads up, before your access point will work, it needs to be updated. And this takes about three or four minutes. And I found you have to unplug and plug back in the access point after the update. You can manage your access point from your phone or your desktop computer. I find it's much easier to use the desktop version. And from here, you control everything. You set the SSID names, passwords, security types, you can manage devices that are connected to the access point, and you can see which devices are connected to each band. And now we're gonna check the speeds of this Wi-Fi 6E access point. Unfortunately, this laptop is not Wi-Fi 6E compatible. However, these speeds are really fast. The Ingenious 336 performs just as well or slightly better than our current Wi-Fi 6 access point. And once we get some Wi-Fi 6E compatible devices, we will see an increase in speed, guaranteed. And the main reason I installed this access point in this location is that we're definitely gonna get a Wi-Fi 6E compatible TV, as well as cell phones and laptops. And this location of the access point will be perfect for those devices. It's within the 50 foot range and there's no walls or obstructions. 
So if you're looking for a Wi-Fi 6E access point that's not too big, has a very intuitive app, and can be used for home or business, then the ECW336 is a great choice. And there'll be a link in the description below for this access point. Well guys, as usual, thank you so much for watching. Remember, like, share, subscribe, comment, and for God's sakes, hit the bell icon. And I'll see you in the next video real soon. Peace.